Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Sam's Outlook. I'm going to be talking to you guys today about an app that you might know called Grinder. If you don't know what Grinder is, don't lie to me, you know exactly what it is. And when I moved to London in my early 20s, I wasn't just a little bit of a slag, I was a total slag. That's right, I was going out in London giving the boys all of this, not just anything. <laughs> and that's why Sam is single. No, I'm only kidding. Downloading Grinder is like a rite of passage for coming of age gay people. For that one straight person that's watching this, Grinder is a dating app where people, not just cisgendered gay males, can actually meet other people for whatever it is that they fancy. Without really knowing what to expect or without knowing what it is, it can be a really scary, confusing and daunting place. Okay, listen up, because it's tea time. The real tea is, is that LGBT kids go through school without no formal sex education. So the only types of education that we might receive regarding sex is from when we start actively having a sex life. So we blindly go into our sex lives without really any proper information. And that's exactly what happened to me and countless other people. But don't you worry, this video is me, Uncle Sam, teaching you everything that that you need to know before you download that app so you don't make the same mistakes that I did. So without further ado, here's 10 things that I wish I knew before I downloaded the app Grinder. Number one, H and H. That's right, we're starting right there. H and H means high and horny. So there's people on Grinder who actively put this in their profile or we send that in a message because they're looking for somebody to take drugs with them as well as doing other things. Now, it's better for you to know what that means. The last thing you want is for you to go there and turn up and they're high, you're not high, and you don't want to get high. Number two, PrEP. PrEP means pre-exposure prophylaxis. And PrEP is a form of medication that a lot of guys in London actually use. And this is a daily medication taken as a way of having safe sex because it allows the person who's taking the medication to protect themselves from any viruses that may be passed on to them, such as HIV. It's good to be on PrEP if you want to start using Grindr for um, whatever dating you want to do. Honestly, PrEP has been absolutely groundbreaking in making it safer to have sex with people who are living with HIV. And to be fair, most people nowadays living with HIV are something called undetectable. So if somebody is undetectable, it basically means that they're living with HIV, but they cannot pass it on because their viral load is so minimal. Being on PrEP and somebody being undetectable basically allows a transmission risk to be almost zero. So it's a way of having safe sex. Number three, do not, and I repeat, do not open grinder in public under any circumstances. Just because you're normal does not mean that there won't be other people out there that will think it's okay to say hello via a bumhole photo. When I say I learned that the hard way, this is what I mean. Okay, true story. I was in the tube once, I was riding the tube and there was a guy sitting next to me. I decided to open Grindr stupidly and I just received bumhole photo after bumhole photo after bumhole photo. So that guy that was sitting next to me also saw those before I could quickly turn my phone off and he moved away from me. So that means that there's one person in London who thinks that I like to look at bumhole photos while I'm riding the tube. And for the dirty pig that sent me those photos, Needless to say, he did not get to ride my tube. Why? Number four, getting pied is absolutely okay. When you're using Grindr, you need to be comfortable with the fact that you will face some form of rejection at any time. I've been rejected loads of times and I'm okay with that because some people just won't get back to you. You just aren't some people's cup of tea. I'm adult enough and people on Grindr need to be adult enough when you're using it to understand that when you approach somebody, it's either gonna be a yes or it's either gonna be a no. There's a 50-50 chance of it going either the way if somebody doesn't get back to you sometimes that basically means that they're not interested not everybody in grinder will be courteous or comfortable enough to send you a message of rejection don't be that guy that always messages people on grinder after they've already ignored you hi 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 because it gets to a point where it's creepy okay stop doing that numero cinco grinder is addictive Grinder can actually become just like any other social media app if you're on it for a while. I just casually open it, just like I casually open Instagram or WhatsApp or whatever. And when you're using it that often, you need to make sure that it doesn't become a source of validation for you. Because like on Instagram, sometimes at the end of the day, if we're being completely honest, using that and seeing how many likes and how much interaction you get can become a source of validation. And in a similar way, Grinder can actually become that for you. So 
Ultimately, we need to make sure that we're able to distance ourselves from it becoming a source of validation for you because that then brings me nicely onto my next point, which is number six, that grinder can be detrimental to your mental health and you need to make sure that your mental health is completely fine before you use it. Now, not everybody has completely fine mental health and I get that. But when you're using Grindr as often and you're facing rejection and it can become a source of validation, if it's not happening for you on there, then it can affect your self-esteem. I've not personally been affected by this, but I have seen myself drifting in towards these sorts then quickly realise and manage my way out of it. But I do know people that have been using it and it's actually impacted their mental health so much because they face such negativity on there. So it can actually make them feel like they're not desirable. Only use it if you're comfortable with being able to handle that and being able to remind yourself that you are worthy than a tap or a message or the amount of grinder notifications that you get in a day. Number seven, there will be so much repetition on Grindr, it will drive you insane. If I have to answer the questions, top or bottom, what are you into? You are calm, what are you looking for? One more damn time on that app. Number eight, they're not all racist. Now, before I get into this point, I just want to put out there that racism does exist and there is no doubt and there's no absolutely denying that. Also, for anyone who's experienced any racism grinder, this isn't to invalidate any of those experiences. They are still 100% valid. And what I'm about to say does not change that whatsoever. So growing up, before I'd even downloaded Grindr, before I even knew Grindr was a thing, I guess the first time I ever found out about it was through people of colour, always on social media, writing about their negative experiences and their racist experiences that they experienced on Grindr. They talked about how people were basically saying racist messages to them and also putting racist messages on their profiles to basically say that they only preferred one race and not the other. Basically, I was there like a little kid just taking notes like, okay, so people say no rice, no spice, no Asians. Okay, so I was basically conditioned from the get-go to be fearful of the experience I was going to have on Grindr because I'm obviously a person of colour and I'm Indian. But my experience on Grindr, since I've been on it for a couple of years now, has actually been completely the opposite. So I've not actually experienced any outward direct racism. I've not seen profiles with those um, hateful messages on there. Nobody has actually direct messaged me when I'm in conversation with them and said any racist slurs and no one has rejected me based off of my race to my face that I know of. Yeah, of course there will be indirect racism where people probably won't get back to me because I'm not their preferred race, but they haven't said that to me so I can't always assume that that will be the case. If that is happening, yes, that is racism, but in actual fact, you know, I still have had plenty of wonderful experiences with people who aren't Indian on there who don't discriminate against me because of my race. And it's actually been quite pleasant, which is surprising. And that's contrary to exactly what everybody else experiences. And I don't know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing differently, but it's not as all bad and um, as you might expect. So not everybody on Grindr will have an experience where they're just bombarded by racists. Number nine. No, that's number eight. Number nine. People on Grindr will actually waste your time. Now, I have been a victim of this so many times. There will be so many people on there that you will talk to and you will spend multiple days actually chatting to on there, just like on any other dating app. And then it'll just lead to absolutely nowhere. You're all excited that you're about to get that D and then it goes absolutely nowhere. It's literally like, you know when you see that box of celebrations in your house, you see it across the table, you get up off the sofa, you walk over, you pick up the box, you're really excited and you open the box and it's just nothing but bounties. So you've literally got so excited and you spent time investing into getting something that you think you're gonna get and then when you get there, nothing actually happens. It's frustrating as hell, it's really annoying, but you know what, it's fine. You just have to accept that that is part and parcel of having that app because people are liable to change their mind and that's totally fine you can't expect something from someone just because you've had a long chat with them people will always change their mind and that's totally fine and finally point number 10 is to always read the profile the profile information is there for a reason listen when you're on grinder you can easily get blinded by something that i like to call 
the brain. And when you get dick brain, you basically just wanna get that D as quick as you can. And that's okay, but sometimes you need to remember that you need to take a breath, you need to read the profile, and you need to check all the details on them. And the last thing you want to happen is to get there and find out that there's some information from this person that you would have otherwise said no to, but that information was listed there in the profile in the first place and you just didn't read it because that's not always the most comfortable situation to get yourself out of, let me tell you. And on that note, we'll end the video there. Okay guys, I hope you found those 10 things very useful. And if you've already been on it and you've used it like me, then I hope you found that relatable. Or you know what, all jokes aside, even though Grindr can be quite a daunting and scary place and a weird kind of app um, to begin with, to be honest, it's actually also very useful. I, since I moved to London, have actually used it to make friends. And I'm currently living with somebody I met on Grindr. My flatmate right now is somebody I met on there. And if it wasn't for the people that I met on there, I don't think I would be as comfortable living down here. Um, so the app can be very useful for you if you're moving somewhere new. Also, if you have any stories about Grindr and if you have any useful tips and relatable things that you think that people need to know about as well, definitely leave a comment because I love reading everybody's comments and some of you have some really wonderful insights. To all the new subscribers that have joined this channel since I uploaded my last video, welcome to Sam's Outlook. It's been honestly amazing to have such support from everybody, from all the comments, from all the subscribers. Um, honestly, it makes me feel so happy. So um, thank you and I will continue to make videos. Sorry about the schedule. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed and you're watching this, please hit that subscribe button um, as it will make my day. Could you want to stay tuned for all the stuff that I'm going to keep putting out onto the internet for my own self-gratification and for your view and pleasure. And follow me on Instagram as well, at Sam's Outlook. I'll put my feed in there for you and the link to that will be in the description box below. So until my next video, bye!